Hi guys, Anton here from Automate the Planet. In this video, I will explain how to use the, the adapter design pattern in automated tests to reduce the usage of hard-coded pauses and at the same time improve the test API usability. I wrote a detailed article about it, so I recommend to check it after watching the video. There is a link at the bottom where you can download the source code uh, that I will demonstrate. But first, let's review what problem we have and then try to solve it. Imagine that we have this online shop that we sell rockets and you're the QA of it. And we need to simulate the purchase of an item. And our web shop, it implements the latest uh, web technologies and instead of rewarding each page uh, on each action, we use asynchronous requests. So keeping this in mind, let's start um, the demo. First, we click the Add to Cart button, then click View Cart. Then we wait for the next page to load. And imagine that today we have a birthday, so um, we received a discount coupon for our birthday. And we applied, waiting for the asynchronous request to finish this loading indicator. And we have a remaining budget, so uh, we decided to purchase actually two rockets. We need to update the card, wait again uh, for the spinners to disappear, click to the proceed to checkout, wait for the page to load, and we need to fill all of these required fields of the billing details. And lastly, we need to place the order. This is our use case. Now let's examine the different solutions. First, um, we create a .NET Core library project. And if we see the references, uh, I installed uh, a couple of NuGet packages. First, we have the .NET test SDK, um, the two packages for the MS test, and then we have three packages for one for the Selenium driver, for the Chrome driver, and uh, this for the weight helpers that I'll show you a bit later. Then uh, our first solution, uh, if you have watched the previous video, uh, I explained how to solve this particular problem with the proxy design pattern. But our initial solution, um, I will demonstrate it now. First, we have a test class and inside it we use uh, the iWeb driver and we start the browser here, we initialize it uh, in the test initialize method be before each test. This will be executed before each test. And after each test, uh, this test cleanup method is executed and we close the browser. Then we navigate to our web shop. We found the different elements and we perform the different actions. In order to handle the different um, page words and the asynchronous request, requests, uh, we use hard-coded pauses. And if you calculate all of these pauses, um, I think you re receive something like additional 35 seconds. This is our initial solution. Um, as mentioned, uh, our second approach was to use the proxy design pattern. So let me show you this uh, shortly. The proxy design pattern basically is something we create something like a wrapper to iWeb driver. And the important thing about the proxy is that it implements the same interface as the wrapped object. In our case, we are wrapping the iWeb driver and we implement the same interface. We pass the actual implementation, the Chrome driver here through the constructor. And the most important part uh, for the waiting is happening inside the find element methods where we use the web driver wait class to wait for the elements to appear and then to return them. This is coming from the, as mentioned, uh, this .NET Selenium Extras wait helpers, previously known as Selenium support. And if we review the tests here, as mentioned, we continue to use the iWeb driver interface Instead of directly initializing the Chrome driver, we pass it to our proxy. And then the usage of the how we find the elements and what actions we do stay absolutely the same. I removed some of the pauses. 
however uh, a few left because uh, these weight helpers cannot handle properly uh, the cases where they are uh, continuing asynchronous requests. This is why I left some of the pauses, so I couldn't remove them all. So let's review what is the adapter design pattern and how it can help us to remove these additional pauses here and how it can make our test a little bit more readable. Um, so let's start. First, let's review the diagram. Here, here. Uh, this is the diagram of the adapter design pattern. We have again a quas that is something like again as a wrapper called web driver adapter. But instead of directly implementing the iWeb driver interface, it implements a new interface that uh, I created for it called iDriver. The iDriver interface is a bit different compared to the iWeb driver interface. It has less methods and, uh, for example, it doesn't have, I, I haven't listed all of the methods and properties here. Uh, it doesn't have, for example, uh, the method manage, navigate to, etc. Instead, it has this go to URL directly and has this new wait for Ajax method, uh, which is a new method that will use to wait for the asynchronous requests. And then again, uh, this web driver adapter implements this interface and uses composition principle to hold an instance of the actual web driver, the Chrome driver, and use it inside these new methods. But the interface and the usage will be slightly different in the tests. And additional new thing here uh, is that I created an adapter for the iWeb element as well. We have a new interface instead of using iWeb element, the native uh, you know, web driver element, uh, we have a simplified interface that actually provides new methods. For example, instead of having clear and same keys, we have this more readable name method called type text and have a new property called by, which holds a reference to the locator that we use to find the element. Then we have again this wrapper called element adapter that implements this interface and through composition principle it holds a reference to the actual trap element. Um, so let's see the implementation now. First let's review the different interfaces. Here this is the interface for our driver. Uh, as you can see we have this go to URL, wait for Ajax, and um, another difference here is that the find element and find element methods actually return um, the adapter interface instead of uh, iWeb driver, uh, iWeb element. Next, um, this is the interface of our simplified uh, element adapter. We have this uh, locator property, we have the type text, Again, if we search inside the element, we are returning the adapter interface of the element. And now let's review the uh, driver adapter implementation. Again, uh, since we are wrapping uh, iWeb driver, uh, we hold the instance through composition here as a private read-only field, and we pass the actual implementation through the constructor. Another important aspect um, in the difference compared to the proxy design pattern is that instead of implementing the iWeb driver interface, uh, we implement the new adapter iDriver interface here. And as you can see, the simplification instead of calling navigate go to URL, we have this directly go to URL method. And uh, here is uh, the second difference. Um, first, again, we use the web driver wait to wait uh, for the elements to appear, for the element to appear. And then we are passing the found native element to the element adapter and return uh, its interface instead directly returning the iWeb element. We're doing the same for the group of elements. And finally, we have this new wait for Ajax uh, method. Uh, as you know, in WebDriver, we can execute JavaScript. 
uh, if we cast the driver to iJavaScript executor. And the thing that we do is that uh, we call this called return jQuery active, waiting for all uh, jQuery requests to finish. And instead of uh, you know uh, calling these two methods quick and dispose, we have this simplification um, method called close. And here is the element adapter uh, implementation. Again, we hold the wrapped element here as a private read-only uh, variable. Uh, we pass the actual found element here to the constructor. Um, what else? Here we initialize the how we found the element. Um, in most cases, we just call directly the actual found element uh, properties or methods. But again, um, what else? For example, for the click, we have this new way to be clickable element. And wait, uh, you know, before clicking the element, we wait for it to be clickable and then we perform the click because in some cases the element uh, is there, but it's not in clicking state. And for the type text, uh, again, the code is much more readable because you just go type text and we perform the clear and then the same case. And now let's review how our tests look like now. Again, um, instead of using the iWebDriver interface, here now we use the iDriver, the adapter interface. We initialize and create the actual implementation of the driver and pass the actual Chrome driver here to the constructor. Uh, this is happening before and executed before each test. And here the driver will, uh, you know, the browser will fire up. And then um, when we call the close method, after the each test, the browser is closed. Then instead of calling manage dot go to URL, we directly use the adapter go to URL method and navigate to the page. And when you call the adapter find element method, uh, this will return the new element i element adapter interface, meaning that when you call it here, first we'll wait for the element to appear, then we'll create the adapter element, and then we'll return it here. Meaning that when you perform the click, first we'll wait for the element to be in the clicking state, and then we click it. The same is here. Since this is uh, the adapter element, first we'll wait for the element to appear, then inside this method we'll call the clear and the send keys and we will type the text. What else? Uh, we remove the additional pauses. As you can see, there are no pauses anymore. Instead, we are calling uh, in, in the places where previously we had hard-coded pauses. We call this uh, wait for Ajax method uh, that will wait automatically uh, for all requests, uh, asynchronous requests to finish. That's it. And what else? Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can ask them on the Automate Deployment Forum. And for more automation about design patterns, uh, check the automatedeployment.com. Thank you for watching.